What's up guys, it's your boy Darshkin, and today I wanted to talk about Zhongli. Now the reason why I want to talk about Zhongli is because if you guys don't know, Zhongli is getting his rerun banner in 1.5. He's actually going to be the first banner that drops when the 1.5 patch goes out or whatever, which um, is going to be the 28th, I believe. So um, yeah, it's going to be in about 10 days, or 9 or 10 days, depending. Anyway, uh, yeah, Zhongli is easily a must summon now for the people that already have zhongli before you leave i do have information on whether you should summon or not if you um you know if you already have zhongli so i want to talk about that as well but anyway starting out with if you don't have zhongli why he's a must summon why should you summon first and foremost let's talk about the main reason i feel like people use zhongli zhongli has the best shield in the game Easily, non-debatable, no contest. And there's a couple of reasons why that is, right? So let's let's go ahead and talk about all of those reasons. Uh, number one, the shield duration is 20 seconds, and the cooldown is 12 seconds, meaning that for eight seconds you will have the cooldown up while you still have the shield on, unless it breaks. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. Theoretically, you can have his shield up. 100% of the time besides the cast time because if you guys don't know whenever he puts his shield on he takes it off for a brief moment so outside of taking it off to reapply it you would have theoretically 100% uptime on his shield but that's not the only reason the next reason is it scales off of HP but it doesn't stop there the HP percent that it scales off of is such a high number right 25% of max HP at level 12. Now, I know a lot of you got to say, oh, well, you have to get, you know, constellations to get to, you know, level 12, blah, blah, blah. Even at level 9, level 10, it's going to be above 20%. So, that alone is is insane. But the reason why that's so insane is that Zhongli has the highest base HP in the game, along with Gene. But he also has a passive called Fortification. And Fortification... Or it's called Resonant Waves. But anyways, it fortifies his shield. Meaning every time his shield takes damage, it gets fortified by 5%. Increasing the shield strength. And this is up to 25% because it stacks 5 times. So not only does he have the strongest shield in the game. Not only does he have the highest base HP in the game. And his shield scales off of maximum HP. Not only is the HP uh, multiplier high. But he also... Increases his own shield strength when he takes damage with this shield. And then it doesn't even stop there. He's a Geo character. And if any of you guys remember the Geo buff, instead of him absorbing 250% damage to his element, right? Like if you look at uh, Diana, if you go look at her shield, 250% uh, damage absorption to cryo damage. This is because she's a cryo character. Well, with Zhang Li, they took that out of the game and instead. They gave him 150% damage reduction to all damages, meaning 150% the physical damage and elemental damage. Any damage source, he has 150% extra damage absorption. So now, <laughs> not only does he have the fortification, not only does he have all of these things, he also has that as well. So long story, I, trust me, I could, I could go all day about why his shield is so good and why it is amazing. But all of these reasons is why he is, or his shield is the best shield in the game and why it's so good. His auto attacks also scale off HP. They have HP scaling and attack percent scaling. His ult also has HP scaling and attack percent scaling. So every, every damage in his kit scales off of attack percent and can scale off HP percent and also can crit. So the crit damage is also a factor in that as well. So building him is going to be very, very easy. And he works really well into any team. His shield also gives a debuff to any enemy in the area that they uh, their, their physical resistance is reduced by 20%. So not only does he act as a shield or a tank, he's also a supportive type of debuffer for your team as well. So you pop his shield and then you switch to your main DPS, whether that's, you know, Zhao or whoever, right? You want to run D-Luke, run D-Luke, sure, cool. Looking at his ultimate, his ultimate is obviously amazing, does a lot of damage, high multiplier, and it petrifies enemies up to four seconds. 
right? Very, very good. Now, I, I crowned his ult because it does so much damage. Cooldown is low, and energy cost is low. Now, I know a lot of people talk about Zhongli have energy problems, which I've never really had an energy problem with him. If you pop his ult, and he kills, like, two enemies, he's going to get his ult right back. Um, if you're fighting bigger enemies and you pop his ult, he's he may not get his ult back depending on how much energy recharge you have. It, it all depends. It's very situational, but for the most part, he gets his his ult pretty easily, especially if you're running other units in your team that generate a decent amount of energy. I run Zhongli with Zhao, and when Zhao dashes, he gets three orbs, which is good. So I dash a couple times with Zhao. My Zhongli's doing perfectly fine. Also, if you need to, you can run a ba run a battery like Albedo or GOMC. There are units like that that you can run that are going to give him his ult off cooldown non-stop. On top of weapon choices, he has some of the easiest weapon choices in the game. And the reason why I say that is because he has so many different builds and so many different playstyles. you can run him on pretty much anything. You can run him on Vortex Vanquisher. You can run him on Primordial Jade. You can run him on Staff of Homa. Hey, if you have, an, if you have a Favonius Lance... Giving him energy recharge is amazing, and whenever he crits, he will give his team energy recharge, which is going to be really good for him, for his ult, and really good for your team. If you want to run a Monolithic Spear, it's giving him attack percent, and it's giving him crit rate, which is really nice. Run him on like a crit damage headpiece, you can get a lot of good damage off. Just remember, you have to run a leeway character. You can run him on Black Cliff Weapon, because that's going to give him crit damage and attack percent, which is nice. You can run him on the Battle Pass. Spear, which is going to give him crit rate and uh, give him attack percent or attack and defense. Pretty much any weapon is good for him. You can run him on Crescent Pike if you're going for a physical damage build. You can go with the prototype spear if you run it if you want some energy recharge. You can I'm not sure if it's white tassel or black tassel. One of them gives HP. You can run him on that three-star weapon if you want to as well. He is a must summon. Now, talking about constellations very briefly for the people that already have Zhang Li, because I know a lot of you guys already have them, and you want to know if you should summon or not. First off, if you want Yanfei, I mean, you have to summon, right? That just offer it. If you have Yanfei, you have to summon. So, I mean, I guess this doesn't apply to you. But if we're talking strictly Zhang Li, right? You don't care about Yanfei. We're talking strictly Zhang Li. Should you go constellations or not? The answer is 100% no. I can tell you up front, C1 ain't worth it at all. I don't even, <laughs> I don't use this at all. I, like this is, this is not a factor in anything I even do. The C1 doesn't matter. The C2 also doesn't matter because like I said, theoretically you'll have 100% uptime on your shield. Having his shield reset on the, on the ultimate won't matter because the shield is always going to be on to begin with. I guess it's going to save you like one or two seconds of cast time for using his E, but like does that is that really the difference no so and then plus three on shield which is nice but i mean you don't need it um increased aoe on his ultimate and then increased petrification number one it's the fourth constellation so you got to get four constellations to even get this but once again this is literally just a uh, ease of use not necessary at all plus three on ult giving more damage sure and then the c6 gives healing but if your shield never breaks, and you always have your shield up, you're not taking damage. And if you don't take damage, you don't need to heal. So, anyways, those are all the reasons why Zhongli is a must summon. Uh, I, I might have missed something on why he's a must summon. Feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I'm perfectly fine with that. This is a type of video where I want everybody to uh, understand why he's so good. And if you have any input on why he's so good... Be my guest, leave it in the comment section. But anyways, that's going to be it for this video. Be sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Comment down below, tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.